Here's the smartest back workout I've ever designed using the most up-to-date scientific research. Welcome back, Dr. Milo Wolf here, real doctor, not the fake kind. Proud owner of a back that can only be described as a dining room table. Let's break down what I think is the best back session according to the science. First, we need to discuss what makes a session effective when it comes to training the back. Well, first of all, a single session needs to fit within your program as a whole. If you're training your back once a week, the optimal session will look very different compared to if you were training it, say, five times a week. So when I'm discussing this session, keep in mind that this is designed to be used in the context of you training your back two to three times a week with a similar sort of session as what I'm about to give you. The reason the session is designed to be used two to three times a week is because we have research suggesting that training a muscle group at least twice a week is going to be better for muscle growth compared to once a week. The next big thing within a good session is that we want to limit redundancy. We want to make sure every muscle group we're trying to target is being effectively targeted. Whenever you train a given muscle group in a single session, you get diminishing returns with each additional set. The first set you do is the most effective on a set per set basis. And so doing 15 sets for your lats in a single session, but doing nothing that really stimulates your upper back is likely a poor use of your time. What this means is that we don't want to do a ton of similar movements for a given muscle group at the expense of hitting other muscle groups better. For example, doing pull-ups and then follow that with assisted pull-ups and then following that with pull-downs. That's gonna be great for your lats, but actually not that much better compared to just doing some pull-ups and then doing some rows, for example. And in the latter case, you actually get a good stimulus for your upper back as well. So we want to avoid redundancy within your session when it comes to exercise selection and also rep ranges. And when it comes to rep ranges, we want to pick the rep ranges that are best for muscle growth. Specifically for muscle growth, sets of anywhere from five to 50 reps will be optimal for hypertrophy, provided you take them close enough to failure. But therein lies the challenge. Most people will have trouble taking a set close enough to failure with super high reps. For that reason, for feasibility and for pushing yourself sufficiently close to failure, most of your training for any muscle group should happen in the sort of 5 to 15 rep range. Indeed, we have research suggesting that when you go above about 12 to 15 reps, your accuracy in determining how close to failure you are does break down quite a bit. With that being said, we do want to include a variety of rep ranges within your session. There is some evidence suggesting that using a variety of rep ranges, so not just going heavy or just going light, is going to be better for muscle growth. So going heavier on some exercises and going lighter lighter on some exercises. Again, this comes back to the whole redundancy idea. If a session has a three by 10 on everything and very similar movements over and over again, not the best look. Next, we want to make sure we do enough sets within that session to maximally stimulate hypertrophy in the context of your whole training week. That means we want to train each muscle group that we're targeting with at least five sets or so for that session, and maybe all the way up to 15 sets. Indeed, some more recent research actually suggests that volumes of up to maybe 25 to 40 sets or so could provide greater hypertrophy compared to just 10 to 20 sets per week. With that being said, 10 to 20 sets per week per muscle will still be highly effective for a muscle you're not trying to specialize on or if you just want a very good growth. So for muscle groups you're really focusing on, getting five to maybe all the way up to 15 sets in a single session is a good idea. Next, for a really effective back workout, we want to make sure each set is taken sufficiently close to failure to maximize muscle growth. What does that mean? Well, a recent meta-regression by Robinson and colleagues showed that the closer you take a set to failure, the more hypertrophy you see on a set per set basis. However, what I would do is earlier in a session, I would go slightly further from failure so as not to cause too much fatigue that can impair performance later in that session. So you want to stay slightly further away from failure in the earlier exercises in a session and go closer and closer to failure as you reach the end of your session. The same also applies for individual exercises. On the first couple sets of an exercise, stay a little bit further away from failure and then gradually inch closer to failure as you go. That way, you still get the benefit of taking some sets close to or to failure, but you do not get the impairment of causing too much fatigue too early into a session all too much. Next up, pick maximally effective exercises for each muscle group. I have a whole series on this topic and you can check that out somewhere here for the back, but here is the breakdown. The exercise we pick should be stable, the target muscle group should be the limiting factor, it should target one of the functions of the muscle we're trying to target, it should be stretch friendly, that is to say you both get a good stretch in the target muscle group, you can do length and partials on that exercise pretty safely, 
and there is plenty of tension in that stretched out position. Ideally, the position you're in should be as least fatiguing as possible. That is to say, you sit down when you can versus standing up. You don't bend over when you can avoid it. As being bent over or standing up in a variety of exercises generally causes a bit more fatigue for non-target muscle groups than just sitting down. And finally, whatever exercise we pick, especially if you're short on time, should be time efficient. And that means generally things like dumbbell work and staff loaded machines are better than barbells. For this science-based back workout, we want to make sure we pick the most effective rest intervals between sets. Based on the evidence we have, that means at least 60 seconds for most, if not all exercises, and perhaps closer to two to three minutes of rest between sets for more compound exercises. Ultimately though, if you prefer taking shorter rests, you can likely see the same hypertrophy by just doing more sets, but with a shorter rest time. Exercise order within your session isn't all that important. I have a whole video on that somewhere here, but let me give you a quick breakdown. Generally, there may be a very slight marginal benefit to starting with the exercises that are most important to you. If for example, you're focusing on your lats at the moment and you're really trying to bring them up, maybe starting your back workouts with your lat exercises is a good idea. We'll also generally want to order our sessions in a way that maximizes performance across the board. If, for example, you find that starting your session with barbell bent over rows reduces performance on the subsequent lat pulldown, but starting with lat pulldowns doesn't reduce performance on your subsequent bent over rows, maybe you'd want to start with pulldowns first, followed by bent over rows, so as to maximize performance on both exercises. As a general rule of thumb though, exercise order doesn't matter all that much and the more compound exercises should probably come first. And finally, you need to make sure you use good technique on all exercises. What does this mean? Well, a recent review paper I was involved in identified three main components of good technique for building muscle. First, you should make sure that the range of motion you use emphasizes the stretched position. That means that you want to use at least a full range of motion really focusing on the stretch or you can use lengthened partials and focus on the stretch even more. Second, you want to make sure your reps take at least two seconds or so with your eccentric at least being somewhat controlled. In general, having your eccentric phase potentially last a little bit longer than your concentric phase is a good idea. And finally, whenever possible, you probably want to minimize involvement of non-target muscle groups. When you're doing a barbell bent over row, for example, you don't want to do the chicken shrug where you're essentially involving your hips, aka glutes, hamstrings, adductors, and lower back a lot more than necessary. Because ultimately, this doesn't really add much to your back stimulus, but it does potentially add more fatigue overall. Without further ado, here's a super effective science-based back workout. First, we're gonna start with an upper back focused exercise. Ideally, try a chest supported T-bar row. If you don't have a chest supported T-bar row, try a prime machine row, if you have it, or otherwise, any sort of chest supported machine roll will do, or even an incline dumbbell row. As I broke down in the best back exercise video somewhere above here, I think the chest supported T-bar row is a great choice. This movement will target scapular retraction and adduction, which helps emphasize the rhomboids and the middle and lower traps, and shoulder transverse extension, which helps target the rear delts. Perform this exercise for three to five sets of five to 10 reps, starting the exercise around three reps away from failure, and then for your last set, go all the way to one rep in reserve. Inch a little bit closer to failure with each set. Between sets, rest for two to three minutes. In general, if you feel ready to perform another set that's similar in performance to the last one, that's a good sign that you've rested enough. Why is this exercise good? Well, first of all, your chest is being supported, so you're minimizing fatigue on, for example, your glutes, adductors, hamstrings, and lower back muscles that will otherwise need to stabilize the load a lot more. Second, because of the way a T-bar moves, there is the most tension in the bottom position, which is likely a good thing for hypertrophy. On this exercise, we'll be using a rep range of five to 10 because rows usually work better, in my experience, in the lower rep range. Ultimately, they are a relatively compound movement where you have some stabilizing muscle groups involved. They also hit the lats pretty well. So what happens when you're targeting them with high reps is oftentimes you'll get out of breath or you'll end a set not because the back is fatigued, but because you're overall fatigued. Aim for closer to five sets if you're really trying to focus on the upper back or if you're only training your back once or twice a week and closer to three sets if your upper back isn't as big of a focus or if you're doing more sessions across the week targeting your back. Next up, we'll do a lat focused exercise. And for the lat focused exercise, I recommend trying an underhand pull down. The underhand pull down targets shoulder extension, which helps us grow the lats and the teres major predominantly. Perform this exercise for three to five sets of 10 to 20 repetitions, 
taking the first set to about two reps in reserve and the final set all the way to failure. Once again, inch a little bit closer to failure with each additional set. With a lat pull down, because fewer muscle groups are involved in stabilizing the load, I find it's a bit more appropriate to higher rep range, like 10 to 20 reps in this case, than for example, any sort of rowing variation. While pull downs usually don't do a great job of targeting that stretched position, you can increase the stretch focus by doing lengthened partials. Between sets for the underhand pull down, rest for two to three minutes. For your third exercise in this session, you have two choices. Either you can go with a more lat focused exercise, if you would rather grow bigger lats, or you can go with an upper back focused exercise. For an upper back focused exercise, try a high row variation for three to five sets of 10 to 15 reps between one rep in reserve all the way to failure on the last set. Or alternatively, if you want more of a lat focus, try the dumbbell pullover as a finisher for high reps. Try the dumbbell pullover for three to five sets of 20 to 30 reps on the first set, going from one rep in the tank on the first set all the way to failure by the last set. Because you'll be going for very high reps, make sure you're going close to failure. If the movement isn't getting slower with those last few reps in the set, there's a good chance you're not as close to failure as you think. Why the dumbbell pullover? Well, the dumbbell pullover is highly stretch friendly, increasing the tension on the lats as you reach deeper and deeper and lengthen them. And you're also minimizing fatigue and reducing the amount of moving parts by lying down. Between sets of the high row or the dumbbell pullover, rest for about two minutes. For the final exercise in this session, we'll be targeting a muscle group that hasn't really been trained that effectively within this session yet. And that is the upper trap. For our upper trap focused exercise, I recommend the seated dumbbell shrug. This movement targets scapular elevation, which helps us target the upper traps. On this movement, I recommend like to do a drop set to save some time and make training the upper traps a little bit more engaging. I'll do one activation set followed immediately by four 20% load drops. The first set should have about 10 to 15 reps, and each subsequent set will often have between five and eight reps, however many you can get. For this movement, take the first set to about one rep in reserve and gradually inch closer to failure with each additional set going all the way to failure on your last set. After you're done with the set, immediately grab the next lightest dumbbells and start the next set. And finally, you can finish off the session with any biceps or rear delt or forearm work that you desire. That way you have a complete pull session or you can just keep it a pure back session using the exercise that I mentioned. Let's go through a checklist of an effective session and make sure we've hit all the boxes. First, have we limited redundancy? Well, yeah, we have. We have one upper back focused exercise, which involves certain functions. We have one flat focused exercise, which involves a different set of functions. Then we have a third exercise that can be somewhat redundant, but it is going to be adding more volume for a specific body part that you're trying to focus on. And finally, we have an upper trap focused exercise. So all in all, we've limited redundancy in terms of exercise selection. In terms of rep ranges, we have also limited redundancy by including a variety of rep ranges. Next, we've made sure to include maximally effective rep ranges. All of the work you'll be doing has at least five reps per set and no more than about 30 reps per set. We've also made sure to include a variety of rep ranges across the session to potentially get a little bit more muscle growth. Next, as far as volume goes, we have hit a very effective amount of volume provided that this session is repeated twice or three times a week. By taking each set to between three reps in reserve all the way to failure, we are also targeting relative intensities or proximities to failure that are highly effective. All the exercises we've picked in this session, the chest support for a T-ball row, the lat pull down, the seated dumbbell shrug, they all focus on the lengthened position in some regard, are relatively stable, minimize fatigue by having you sitting down or being chest supported whenever possible. We've also made sure to rest for at least 60 seconds, but usually two to three minutes between sets. While exercise order is not the be all end all, we've generally structured things in a way that has your most important muscle groups, the most compound movements trained first. And finally, by having enough of an eccentric phase, making sure we're not rushing the tempo but not going overly slow, by having a focus on the lengthened position, and by minimizing involvement of other non-target muscle groups, we've made sure that we're using optimal technique for muscle building for all exercises. That's the video. That is the most effective science-based back workout that I can come up with at this point in 2024. If you liked the video, please comment, like, subscribe. I appreciate your support. If there's anything else you want to see or you have any questions about this session, leave a comment down below. If you'd like me to coach you, feel free to check out the link above for coaching. With that being said, have a great day and I'll see you next time. Peace.